Uh, in this section of the video, I'm going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be looking at the results of this project. So what I mean by the results, uh, specifically we're going to be looking at uh, some metrics uh, for the error between our predicted uh, 2D key points versus the true 2D key points. Uh, we're also going to be looking at how uh, that error was affected by using different models, or sorry, uh, technically, we're only using uh, one model structure in this video. That's the SteveNet new, or basically, this is the closest to the uh, original PVNet model. Uh, we're using a model that was trained using the alt labels and a model that was trained using the standard labels. So, just a refresher: the alt labels are the labels that are generated uh, using uh, 3D key points on the surface of the model of the object, and the bounding box ones are uh, just 3D key points uh, that define the bounding box of that object. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the performance, uh, how the performance changes uh, by changing uh, how the algorithm behaves uh, by changing the number of, of hypotheses. So these are the ransack hypotheses considered uh, in the ransack process. Uh, I used a value of 50 for one set of trials and a value of 100. Uh, basically, uh, this number greatly affects uh, the speed or like how fast uh, each image is processed. So the ransack process is like the most time expensive process. Uh, in this, you know, method or algorithm, uh, so you definitely want to have like a balanced. Uh, as you increase that, your performance will increase, uh, but you you might be paying a lot more time for that. Um, so it really just depends on uh, your uh, whatever function uh, you need. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be checking is uh, the effect of pruning. So what I mean by pruning is uh, basically once in a while the uh, key po the ransack key points would generate an outlying key point or a key point that wasn't helpful. Uh, so we're looking at different methods for removing that key point. Um, one of these methods, so I have this if printing variable. One of these methods is pretty straightforward. Uh, so the ransack process assigns a weight uh, to each uh, generated key point. Uh, so in this ratio method, we order those key points by weight in descending order, and then we remove the last x percent of key points. So I used uh, 50 percent, uh, just removing. So you remove the, the fifth half of your the lowest half of your key points uh, ordered by weight. And by that, you're, you're getting this, uh, you wind up with a set of key points that has a stronger uh, population consensus behind it and uh, should ultimately give you a better, a more accurate value. Uh, the other uh, pretty method that I used was uh, using the process uh, with, uh, de I was detecting outliers using, uh, by calculating the mean values and the standard deviation of the y and x values. And uh, basically there's this variable in this function and if, you, you, if it find if it uh, if a if the y or the x value lies outside n times uh, the uh, the the standard deviation, so n times the standard deviation centered around the mean. Uh, basically, you have this threshold centered around the mean defined by the standard deviation and a variable, uh, kind of a scalar variable controlling how many standard deviations you're looking for. Uh, and you're you're excluding any uh, outliers that lie out, outside of that range. Um, so, uh, I, also, I guess I should also say how these, uh, we're going to be looking at some graphs that uh, give values for the error for each of these methods. Uh, these graphs were generated using, uh, so at the end here, we wind up with these values, we wind up with a, uh, we take our y predictions and then we have our y true values from that. Uh, you can measure, uh, you can uh, output these metrics of mean absolute error and mean squared error. I think mean absolute error gives uh, uh, an easier to interpret indication looking at these graphs of uh, the be better performance. But um, we're saving these values, so each of these uh, y true and y pred gets added to these true lists and this pred list. Uh, those values are pickled, and then they are to generate these graphs, they are opened again in this, in this function. Uh, we have our pred results and our true results in here. And we're basically just, uh, we can calculate uh, the squared error and the absolute error again and generate these bar graphs. So uh, looking at these bar graphs, we have a couple here. Uh, as I said before, uh, we're going to be looking at our kind of vanilla, like so no pruning and uh, no and a standard number of hypotheses. So my standard was 50 and I check uh, 100 as well in one implementation. Uh, so this is what we got for that. Uh, we have our alt, our alt labels uh, being outperformed by our bounding box labels. Uh, this was kind of disappointing to me because uh, after all that time developing the alt labels, uh, 
of the reason that I spent all that time developing like the alt labels method was because in the PVNet paper they were saying that they were getting better performance using the alternate labels, uh, but that wasn't reflected here. So I put some extra effort into all this like uh, into generating these different method methods and parameters, hoping to kind of find out uh, at least why this was happening or if uh, I could change it in such a way that it would be corrected. So. The number of uh, hypotheses, let's take a look at that one next, because uh, that one's easy just to change. Uh, this really didn't change too much. Uh, we can see that we're going down from uh, 125, approximately 125 for the alt labels to not much less than that for the alt labels here using a um, large number of hypotheses. Uh, we're going down from about 50 on the bounding box to maybe about 25 on the bounding box. Uh, something to note here is I only used 30 trials on this, uh, and the outliers that get generated here in uh, the absolute error are severe enough that uh, in something like 30 trials, if you're unlucky and you get you know one or two bad outliers, then uh, that'll throw off your data. So I probably should have, should have done more here, but it's uh, it's a pretty time expensive process. Um, but I think it's it's clear enough that this doesn't have a hugely dramatic effect. I don't think that uh, for any practical purpose, a uh, hundred for most practical pur purposes, a hundred hypotheses uh, would not be worth the performance improvements, especially uh, compared to the performance improvements that we can get using other things. So we have uh, this was generated using the pruning ratio, this graph here. So actually, let's just keep this uh, standard one up here. Uh, so we have we we went we get a big improvement here uh, by using the printing ratio of I I believe I was using fifty percent here we're going all the way down from one hundred and twenty five mean absolute error to about twelve point five absolute error similarly we're seeing uh, uh, a pr proportionally a proportional improvement in uh, the bounding box method we're going down from about fifty to about five so we get a big dramatic improvement uh, over a process that doesn't take very long at all. Uh, and greatly improves the, the final accuracy of the results that we're getting. So that was cool to see. Uh, the standard dev um, method uh, did improve my results, but didn't improve them as well, uh, as much. Uh, so I was using, I think, a range of n equals 2. So within, uh, within two standard deviations, uh, those values get kept. Uh, we see a, a notable improvement, but not as good as the ratio improvement. Um, and then what else do we have here? Oh, so the final thing that I looked at, I was, I was looking, uh, trying to find out why the alt labels weren't performing as well. And basically, uh, what I found for or when you look at, you know, the list of absolute errors for each trial, uh, basically, they would mostly be good. Uh, and then you would get, you know, one or you would get maybe one in 50 uh, bad outliers, but these outliers were su super, super bad uh, compared to the rest. You know, the mean absolute error would generally be less than 10, and then you'd get one outlier that was like in the thousands range, you know, maybe about every 50 or so. Uh, so what I did was I actually, uh, I, t I took a method to uh, measure the results um, taking out those outliers. So that's described in remove outliers here. Basically, it's a similar method to what we have earlier. Uh, we are we are finding the standard deviation, we're finding the mean, and then we have uh, this uh, scalar that's uh, defining the range that we're looking at, and then we're moving outliers in the exact same way. Uh, so when I ran that, uh, that we got this here. Um, where's the other one? So, and finally we see that our, so when you remove uh, those outliers, uh, they finally outperform, uh, the alt labels finally outperform, uh, the uh, bounding box method. Um, just to give an idea of like what those results look like, so I have here, uh, we can run the process for when we're removing those uh, kind of those outlier entries. Uh, actually, that's the, we're gonna get the same output as we did here. Uh, and yeah, so this is the graph that we just saw uh, being, having been generated by Pyplot. Um, but yeah, these are the mean absolute errors. So first for the alt labels, and then and then down here for the bounding box. Uh, for the alt labels, we're removing six entries, and the the outliers are also worse. So if if we take a look through here, you know, almost all of these values except for the outliers are going to be below ten. Uh, I think that all of them are below ten except for you know you can see an outlier here. Uh, but the rest are all pretty good, and we're printing six of two thirty six uh, for the bounding box. 
Uh, not only were we printing less, even though 236 is probably not enough samples given to, to you know to be able to definitively say that the outlier rate is uh, is less for the bounding box method, but uh, the outliers are also uh, generally smaller. Uh, I, I probably should run more epochs to get you know a definitive idea, but from from this data, it, it, it looks as though it might be the case that uh, the bounding box uh, has uh, fires outliers less frequently, and the outliers are less severe. Um, so yeah, I think that that, that uh, pretty much sums up everything that I wanted to uh, describe about, about this hypothesis variable and uh, the, the pruning methods. Um, to further refine this and get like the best performance possible, you would have to uh, experiment with both the pruning methods. So it looked at first as though the uh, this ratio method might be the stronger method, but you should play around. I should play around with the percentage too, to uh, find what the optimal percentage is. And I should probably I should also do more investigation with the standard deviation to see if I can find a scalar. Uh, the scalar for the standard deviation is contained in here. Uh, I just have it at two right now, so within two standard deviations of the mean is kept. But uh, you can play around with that value more and see if you can get better results as well. Um, also in this folder, so I have some uh, images that we that I saved from the output. So we draw our final bounding box right on the right on the image. So the bounding box that we draw is in blue, and the true bounding block uh, the true bounding box is in green. Um, so in this folder. Uh, I have outputs from both the models, so this is the model trained on the bounding box labels, and then uh, I have a second set trained on the alt labels, and then for each of those I have 10 photos with this standard deviation style pruning and 10, and 10 uh, images with um, no pruning. And I don't know, I, th I thought this would be interesting to see, even though it's not completely clear that uh, the, the uh, pruning method is outperforming um, the standard deviation method. Or, sorry, that the that the standard deviation pruning method is outperforming the vanilla method. Sorry, you can see here uh, with the titles, they're in the order of uh, pruning method, non-pruning method, pruning method, non-pruning method. Here's one where the pruning method doesn't perform so well, and where the method without pruning performs quite well. But I think that you can see overall that uh, the pruning method does outperform. Uh, Ten samples is you know really not enough to get to get a sense of that, but. Uh, yeah, here's one that doesn't perform very well without the pruning. But uh, I thought that like it's it's cool to be able to visually see this output and visually see the post estimation that we get. You know, this is the best uh, visual view that we're going to get without like looking at metrics. Uh, the alt labels uh, with the pruning, so it's the same order. We're looking at pruning, non-pruning, pruning, non-pruning. Non I've got to say these look a little better overall uh, than the than. Uh, the uh, non-alt labels, um, and then at the end here, uh, we actually get a complete misfire. So this is what like one of those uh, one of those outliers looks like when you get this photo. You get a bounding box that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, I think that the camera is inside the bounding box or something. Like I can't even really interpret what these blue lines mean. But I, I don't know it's kind of funny to see what they actually look like. Um, anyway, that about concludes it for this video. Uh, I hope that. Uh, this uh, series can be helpful for people either interested in, you know, some type of machine learning or computer vision. Uh, I also think that, uh, so I know that I didn't go to the point where, like, I optimized uh, this method, but I, I think that uh, it's more of a proof of concept thing. Like, uh, we see the effects that the number of hypotheses have, uh, and also we see the effects that uh, pruning has, and then we, all, we can also see the effects of uh, the models being trained on using different uh, training data. Uh, so I, I hope that that was all demonstrated in this video and I hope this video was uh, that this video series was uh, useful to some guys out there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.